Can you hear me? <laughs> Where are you? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Cool. How's it going? Craig is coming in one second. <laughs> All right. Cool. So, Brianna, Christine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Got it. Which which one are you again? I, I'm Gareth, and uh, Craig yeah. is gonna Craig is gonna join us in one second. Okay, okay. Yeah. Nice to officially meet you. Yeah, yeah, you as well. How's things going? Really good. We've been yeah. really busy this week. Busy yeah. week. <laughs> Sounds like it. Looks like it. You had an event on Saturday or something? Is that right? Uh, yeah. all, all weekend. It was like Thursday till Sunday. And oh, cool. uh, yeah. then got back, um, kind of getting things caught up. A couple of the kids we know ended up in the hospital. So just... Yeah, shame. Yeah. But we always just kind of drop everything and run over there when they're in. So we were yeah. hanging out with them. A few was days. one was one of them Austin or something? I saw like a yeah. lot of posts about Austin. Okay, shame. Yeah, that was one of them. Um, is is what? Yesterday, so that's good. He's doing good. Yeah. Ah, that's cool. That's cool. Wow, what you guys are doing is just amazing. It's so <laughs> wow. It's really heartwarming stuff. I promise you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah, we like it. Yeah. I mean, it's. That's tough. They, uh, <laughs> you see a lot of not fun things yeah. too, but uh, that's that's cool that we can be there. <laughs> I can imagine it must take its toll, like mentally, on you guys. Uh, a little bit. Yeah. Week, yeah. Yeah. Worth it. <laughs> yeah. 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 But you've got such a positive mental attitude to things, and you know that that definitely helps go and goes a long way. Hey, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> Have you been to Italy before? No. This will be oh, my cool. first time overseas, so I'm excited. Wow, that's exciting. You got your passport and everything. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So there's Craig, obviously. How are you guys? Oh, oh where are we? Can you see Craig? Uh, yeah, there you are. <laughs> How do we flip Bye. back and forth? There we go. Oh, there, you should... That's cool. Hi, Greg. How's it going, guys? <laughs> so, have you have you guys uh, been on any podcasts before? You said it was your first one, eh? No, first one. We're <laughs> starting. So no, you'll do awesome. great. Yeah, it's it's really cool. Like it's you know like our podcast is really kind of pretty chilled. To be honest with you, it's um, yeah. th there's nothing like tough about it. It's just like your story. Do you know what I mean? And um. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, which is cool because you you said you listened to the Nalu clothing um, Dolly and oh, Finn cool, one. Yeah, yeah um, they were cool. <laughs> they were so cool. Like seriously, we were like blown away by them. We couldn't believe yeah. their story. Like it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Well, good afternoon there, Brianna and Christine Tassaro from Hello. Sacramento, California. How's it going? Going, <laughs> going good. good. Yeah. Thanks cool. for having us on. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, I know. Thanks for coming on. It's uh, it's really great to have you on our podcast. And you know what the really cool thing is, is that uh, I found out about you through, I think we can call it a common super fan, Gary Hurt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, Love that guy. <laughs> he's so cool he seems to hang out yeah. with like all people that are sp spreading like positive vibes and stuff and you know yeah. I always look at his posts and he posts something with you girls a while back and then I was like wow I was like I just checked I guess I checked out your profile and I was like whoa you're doing some amazing things and I saw your story and it was rather Aww. incredible so we really just chuffed that you are, you know, coming on our podcast today on the Ridiculously Human podcast. It's really exciting. And thanks yeah. for having us on. This is awesome. It's, uh, <laughs> so cool. Yeah. That's, uh, that's how a lot of things, a lot of people we get connected with. It's like the most fun, fun part of what we do. So, yeah. 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 Uh, happens <laughs> it's so cool eh? the world these days is so cool how we can just connect with people and you know find out about each other and just like like we were chatting before this you know we're all literally on different sides of the world you know craig in australia yeah. i'm in london you're in the u.s and it's just we're having this chat now and it's almost seamless yeah. which is amazing yeah, yeah. So, it's been cool. a cool day yeah. <laughs> so 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 look you guys have a really um interesting um and inspiring story to tell um but also you have like a very interesting childhood too you know you 
you grew up with uh, a lot of siblings and you were homeschooled too. Um, you're actually the fourth uh, sort of set of guests that we've had that were homeschooled. And oh, all, of them are, all of them are seriously amazing. Like it's, it's rather incredible. And, you know, what, so we'd just like to find out a little bit, like how was it for you, you know, growing up being homeschooled? Um, it was like, I loved it as a kid. Like if I didn't have as many siblings as I did, I probably would have not liked it as much because we were like, we pretty know, much had a whole classroom yeah. just with our family. <laughs> 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 but it was cool. I always liked it because I could do my school on the couch in my pajamas and like all my friends were having to like wake up at 7 a.m. and get on a bus and go to school. And I was like, well, I can sleep in. And <laughs> 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 yeah, it, so I loved it. But you do kind of miss out on the social factor. Of, like, yeah, that's uh, I still still to this day, I feel a little bit awkward and like the groups and stuff. I'm, <laughs> I'm better with people. I'm better with smaller, smaller groups. But uh, no, it was cool. I'm happy. Happy we were raised that way. Um, I don't really know any different. So yeah. never, <laughs> never fit to real school, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the time freedom sounds so amazing, though, like what we've heard from the other guests that we've spoken to is like you, like you say, um, you know, get up at a certain time, don't work the whole day. You just get your stuff done way more efficiently. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. yeah we can like get it done in three or four hours and then you have the rest of the day to do whatever. Or like our family would go on road trips last minute all the time. Yeah. So like one way, one day we'd wake up and parents would be like, we're going on a road trip. Pack on your school and let's go. <laughs> So oh, that's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, so there's eight of you all together, and yeah. that's obviously you know, and that must have been, uh, it must have been really interesting in and of itself, you know, and a really fun and exciting times. But I can imagine there's some chaos that happens uh, in such a big family. So yeah. tell us a little bit about how that was. Mm-hmm. There's definitely like siblings who tend to clash a little bit because of all the different personalities trapped in the same house. <laughs> you get into like a lot of fights and just. I mean, not a not ton a though. Bunch, but you weren't. Yeah, it's it's just you learn to like go with the flow a lot and just not really care about your own like. I don't know. You you learn to just get along with everybody and. Yeah, and it's like especially now that we're older it's just it's super fun having a big family and we're all all really close now and love love getting together and um yeah it's just it's awesome (laughs) it is funny though because like the first set of kids have a completely different raising than the second set (laughs) more strict with like their first ones and then by the time it got to me like i could get like oh they'll be fine (laughs) (laughs) yeah (laughs) oh that's classic I, i can i mean it must have been tough for your parents, though, like homeschooling eight of you. I and mean, what did they do for jobs if they, I mean, did they even have the opportunity to have jobs if they were homeschooling you as well? <laughs> our mom, she was just full time mom. Um, and then our dad, he was actually, uh, he was a pastor, but then he was always like kind of picking up extra jobs all the time just to kind of be able to support the family. So, yeah, he was, he was great. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of odd jobs and stuff. Yeah, on furniture, uh, what else? Working for, was it Pillsbury or Shipping one company of those? And- yeah, <laughs> random stuff. Uh, cool. And, and, and did, um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, so, uh, I actually completely forgot what I was going to ask you, so I'm going to hear about your dad. But um, what, did, uh, what did a typical day look like for you? Was it, um, you know, like... Like you said, you woke up a little bit late, and then what, what did the day sort of pan out to be like? Um, starts out with breakfast. Usually our family was really healthy back then, so it would be like just mom making breakfast for eight, eight nine kids. And then <laughs> <laughs> lots of, we'd all do chores in the beginning, and then you start your school. So you have like, I don't know if we had set times, but I remember like eight or nine is usually yeah. when we started. And then you do that for about four or five hours, and then probably not even that long. Yeah, sometimes three. Hours. <laughs> 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 Let's get real here, people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One 
wasn't and, really uh, set schedule. We played, we played a lot of basketball, too. So we had <laughs> in the basement or outside doing that. And uh, we had, like, we were on homeschool basketball teams all growing up. So we would play other private schools. And, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> so you had some social interaction there with a little bit of sport yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, so, that so did you say your dad was a, a pastor or minister? Yeah. And... So tell us a little bit about that. What, um, like, was he, obviously being a pastor, you're like, you know, real big part of the community. So I'd imagine people are, you know, in and out. You probably, were you a bit involved as well? And, and what kind of um, uh, ministry was he in or is he in? Um, yeah, it was just like a non, non-denominational um, Christian. Uh, so, yeah, he, we were always, always pretty involved. Um, we had do you know, a lot of helping out with like the nursery, watching yeah. kids. And, Our job uh, was nursery. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we always tried to get the babies. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, it was it was cool though. It really just kind of, I don't know, set up a lot of our core values with like, um, just learning to love people and uh, um, Be accepting and understanding of people and like yeah. yeah. Uh huh. So it really yeah. set our foundation for life and what we're doing now. Yeah. Well, it sounds like it's, I mean, you know, you're using that a lot now in your life, aren't you? That's for sure. And cool. what's the kind of uh, age range and, um, you know, did you grow up like in a massive house? Like or <laughs> did you, with eight kids? Like, or what was yeah, it like? It was kind of big. We started out in like a big old Victorian house in Elgin, Illinois. So it had like three floors. There was like a big attic where you could, go through a door in a closet and end up on the roof. So it was kind of like Narnia. It was really cool. (laughs) (laughs) And then we moved to another house in Arkansas, which was two stories and we had 40 acres of land and two donkeys. So that was cool. Oh, cool. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. We tried to like, I don't know. Our dad was tired of the city, wanted his own land. We tried to garden and stuff, but everything died. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) So, but yeah, it was good for a time. But yeah, yeah when our uh, when our brother had passed away um, from cancer, kind of family just needed a change. And about a year or two after that, we ended up uh, coming out to California. And, mm. yeah, we've been so, out here. <laughs> and um, now, I mean, you you've spoken about um, Jason, and uh, I mean, obviously, that's an absolute. Uh, tragedy uh, any way you look at it um, uh, yeah. he was only 15 and mm-hmm. how did that affect your family and maybe you can just tell us sort of how, what the family had to go through and, and, and what actually happened yeah it was uh, it was tough like um, I mean first of all cancer like you never expect that that's something someone in your family is gonna get so he gets it and obviously there's like you know the risk of he could die and stuff but you still like never imagine like no that wouldn't happen to our family Mm -hmm. um so when it did like it was just a huge I don't know kind of hit us right in the right in the heart of the the family because he was like like in the middle middle child he was the one who was really good at like connecting with everybody. Yeah. He would play with mm-hmm. younger Most. kids all the time. He would relate really well with the oldest one. He was the least socially awkward of all of yeah, the kids. Yeah, he was like really <laughs> outgoing and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> when, when he passed, it was like, it was a big hole yeah. that, that kind of cut into the family. And it was really hard to regroup after that, which is kind of why we did move to California because like everybody just needed to start fresh and yeah kind of helped us move on and heal after he passed away. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's so, yeah. that's so sad. I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, and, uh, so he, he passed away from lymphoma. Is that right? Um, yeah. W- w- what actually is lymphoma and, uh, is this, is it like quite a common sort of type of cancer? Um, pretty common. I think mm-hmm. it's, uh, kind of, uh, I don't like his, it's in the lymph nodes. So they were like, they kind of all got swelled swollen up, and, and it's like kind of in the blood too. It's like a form of blood cancer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was like after about a year um, of fighting that, he just like 
any cancer treatment you go through, it's like pretty important that you stay, you know, um, stay away from germs and like, cause just your system is so susceptible to catching anything because of the chemo, it pretty much wipes your body out, brings it down to nothing so it can start building up again. Um, so when his system was already so low, he caught this really bad flu that was just going around. Um, and within like a few days, it just took him out. Mm. Wow. Uh, and I mean, in that time, you, you're a family of faith and what, what, I mean, did you, I mean, were you guys, did you, did you even think that nearer the end that it was a possibility and did you, were you getting together with the community and, and how did that affect sort of, um, yeah, did it affect your feelings towards your faith and that or your parents? I mean, obviously that's something people start to sometimes juggle with in those moments where you're like, how can this happen? You know? And yeah. did that, did you ever think like that or did you ever have those moments? Oh yeah, for sure. It does make you kind of question and, um, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, it just kind of, just kind of choose what to believe. Like, I don't know how or why things work. Um, but I still believe that like God's good and even bad stuff, like it'll, it'll somehow get worked all worked out and, and, uh, and be good in the end. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, I, there's a lot of things I just don't understand and I just kind of learned to be okay with that. Mm. and um you spoke about it being like hard for your family and and you moved and you know uh you know i guess the, the dynamics in the family changed a bit well what was it like afterwards you know like trying to regroup and stuff it, it seemed like everybody kind of pulled together more like you just mm -hmm. like you surround yourself with your siblings you know what you're going through and like connect more and so like it felt our relationship as a family more but it did like it took some recovering <laughs> it was a slow process but it did draw everybody together and that did help yeah and would you guys sit and have open conversations about this not as like whole family ones it was more yeah. like randomly with the sibling you're with or whoever yeah. you're kind of feeling like talking to that day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and how did your parents deal with this um specifically? How did they as a relationship and as partners and as parents, how did they handle it and how did they talk to you about you guys about it? You could you could tell they were trying to be strong for us just to like keep yeah. the family going and still be there for us. But they I were, mean, you kind of have to because there's still seven kids. So they're, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but like it's, it's, it was so hard for my dad in that moment that like, he had to put a hold on pastoring because like he was taking time to grieve. So he had stopped mm -hmm. for a couple of years and mm -hmm. took a break the first year we were in California. And yeah, yeah, yeah. he was, he took a while, it. but yeah 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 sure. and, and and did they like still manage to or obviously homeschool you and stuff or did you kind of put that on hold for a little bit yeah uh, we, we probably took a good break yeah. i mean it's all it's all we took breaks at totally random times so i'm uh i'm sure we did for a while there but then you kind of just yeah catch up. sometimes we did school partly through the summer um just kind of it also, catch up it was all it like helps to distract from it too like just to do something yeah. instead of yeah, yeah. And, yeah i know i mean I know my next question is like you know is also you know, quite a sad question um but this is kind of the trajectory to i guess where a lot of your your story um kicks off with what you're doing now so christine you were diagnosed with uh lymphocytic uh, uh lymphocytic i think leukemia yeah. Um, yep. when you were 20, is that right? Yep. And it was, it was almost like a fortunate time that they found out about it. Cause if it was two days later, things could have looked a lot different. Hey. Oh yeah. If, if I had waited the weekend to go into the ER, like I wouldn't. What? 
They said my my blood levels were so low that it was insane that I was still like working and out and about and like playing tennis because I was doing all of that up until I got diagnosed. So they were kind of just shocked that I was still upright. <laughs> so it was definitely a miracle that I even went into the ER because that's a whole nother big story. <laughs> yeah. Why, why did you go? Like, I mean, you know, it's by fluke again, almost that you find out. Yeah. So it was, I was having fevers for about two weeks up until I went in. And then before that I was having weird reactions with my eyes. So like I got infected in my eye and it blew up really big and was all purple. And then that went away and I started feeling lightheaded and running out of breath when I walked upstairs hmm. and then like the fever came in and that didn't leave for about two weeks. And hmm. I, I was very stubborn about not going to the hospital. <sighs> I figured like it would just go away on its own, <laughs> but I had a roommate at the time. Her name was joy and she worked at the hospital where I lived and she was keeping the doctors like telling them my symptoms just to like try and get ideas. And so one day, like the weekend came and I had a fever again after it was away for a week. And she was like, you should just come in now. There's nobody in the ER and you mm. can get that and then get out and we'll just see what's going on. So I was like, ah, oh, I work on, I have the weekend off and I work on Monday. So maybe I'll just wait the weekend and <laughs> if it's not gone by Monday, I'll come in. She was, she was very adamant about making me go in though. So I was like, okay, I'll do it. So I went in. Um, the ER was still pretty empty, but the doctors looked at me and checked my temperature and I looked fine again because once I got there, the fever left. So the main hospitalist was very near to just sending me home. But the doctor that sh my roommate was talking to all week, like saw me there and was fighting with the main hospitalist telling him that no, oh, she has to stay and we got to draw her blood because something's going on. Hmm. So it actually like, I think they were fighting for a bit and this one guy was advocating for me to get me to stay and threatening to do the other hospitalist if he didn't. <laughs> so they finally decided to keep me and they drew my blood. And that's when like they got the results back and I was shuffled off into a room and quarantined off and people wore gloves and like masks every time they came in. And that's when they told me that it was looking like leukemia. What? That was like... <laughs> That was very insane. Um, night. She was alone too because she no. was like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. So she just drove herself there, didn't tell any of us, and like found out alone, basically. Oh my God. So, I mean, there you are. It, it, it blows my mind how you have these little forks in the road along our journey and the people sometimes the people that you meet are like that person, they are pushing you to go. I mean, they didn't have to. It's just so amazing how, how that turned out, you know, and firstly, sorry, it's a real sad story. And, but how, how did you, you know, take a sad moment when you heard that, did you kind of, were you in disbelief? Were you like, I, I just had a bit of, I feel like I had a cold. Like how do you actually process that in the moment? And, you know, mm -hmm. in, it was a lot of disbelief. Like when he first told me leukemia, I was sitting there and like, wait, is that, that's cancer, right? <laughs> it took me a long time to get past that part. And then it was just like, no, this can't happen to our family again. Like that was always <sighs> one of my biggest fears too, after seeing my brother like pass away from it. So it was, that was one of my biggest breakdown moments of just crying and yeah, I didn't really know how to handle that. Hmm, my God. It's, it's a big difference, isn't there, between someone that's never been in contact with, with cancer or someone that has cancer and versus someone like yourself who has. Like viscerally, you understand that this is a real thing and mm -hmm. oh, I can just imagine how hard that must, must hit. Yeah. Was, yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah and and then um what did you i guess you like you you rang a family to let them know um and yeah so my roommate was working that night so she came in and i told her and she like held me while i cried with her and then she called my sister the, another one the one between us 
and then she called Brianna and then just just they came to the hospital and waited with me in the ER and once I was admitted two of them stayed the night with me and <laughs> wow had to have like three blood transfusions right away <laughs> like wow that's hectic and then wow. um and then uh Brianna you then decided it was your mission, you took on the responsibility and you were going to help Christine through this whole process. You kind of put your life on hold. Is that right? Yeah. Um, cause you know, like, uh, I like it. It's just, I don't know. It's, uh, it's crazy when she got it too. It was like, you don't, you never know how, how long you're going to have. So, um, yeah, I decide like the least I can do if she has to go through this is be there and like <laughs> at least try to keep all the germs away and um, you know, be there with through the treatments, try to make it the happiest I could. So whether she's here another couple of weeks, another couple of years or forever, like um make that that time we do have the best it could be. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. She and <laughs> and how was your how was your well, how was your guys' mindset at that stage? Were you like, we're gonna do this? We're gonna, or were you just like, how did you both of you, I guess, in from different aspects, um, how did you mentally sort of feel like you're gonna go forward with that in that moment? <laughs> it's kind of like all of the emotions all at once, like all the fears, the sadness, like anger. Um, and then, but also like the determination and, uh, um, I always, I did, um, I did really feel like she was gonna, gonna be okay. And mm. just that, like the most support and the most like positivity we could bring her around her to help her get through that. Um, I felt like that would be, you know, just the best, best thing we could do. Um, mm. but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> From my perspective, it was a lot of that. But then mostly what was going through my brain was, well, no way through, but through. <laughs> so like, mm. just got to yeah. buckle up and kind of get through it all and do it the best way I can, which mm. I knew in the beginning, because I was always like a very happy, positive person. And from the start, I was like, well, I definitely don't want to lose that going through this. So I made it mm. a point to like keep that because that was such a big part of who I was so I was like I'm gonna make this the best I can for me and stay positive and just fight through it and kind of make Jason proud kind of mindset mm. Mm. and and sorry to this is a bit of a random question but at in that you know in this in the weeks um following this um diagnosis and that do you like get straight on to google and try and you know find out exactly what needs to be done or do you just go okay I trust the doctors or how did you kind of you know yeah I was definitely the I'll just trust the doctors I don't think <laughs> about it Google can uh, it can Google sometimes stuff. get it can get scary sometimes so sometimes it's better just not to look yeah <laughs> yeah for sure self-diagnosis is not always the greatest thing is it's an, an <laughs> Yeah. My parents did that though. Did they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's yeah. what everyone does, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, would, they would try to like, you know, send her healthy stuff that like might help through it too. And, really gross you know, when, when you're going through treatment though, it's kind of like whatever she could get down, like just eat it. Because <laughs> so, a lot of the time they're like nauseous, don't want to eat. Um, mm. don't want to drink so if they'll eat pizza like sure <laughs> eat pizza yeah for sure and, and you speak about treatment there what what sort of treatments did you go through uh, was it uh, like chemo or did you have a like a bone marrow transplant or anything like that um I didn't do the transplant I just had it was just chemo and then steroids and yeah oral chemo just a big cocktail yeah. of chemo all the time so for the first 10 months it was really intensive so I would be there every week and getting lumbar punctures once a month or sometimes twice a month 
and then with Even sometimes they're every other day depending on oh. the, yeah. the stuff you're getting and then like sometimes they would give you shots like chemo shots that you give yourself at home so there was just a lot in the 10 months so that's when I was like depleted the most I was on the couch pretty much that whole time and yeah nauseous oh. really well nice. And, and what's your mindset like at that sort of stage? You know, obviously you're positive and you, you're wanting to stay positive, but it must be, it must be so difficult. Mm-hmm. It was. Like, during the hardest moments, this might sound kind of bad, but when it was really, really bad and like the days I couldn't walk or was just constantly puking, I would think, well, either it's going to end and I'll die or <laughs> it'll get better. <laughs> And at that point, like it would have been a relief either way. So. Wow. <laughs> That's kind of how I made it through my toughest, toughest moments. And then sometimes that were still tough, but like better, it was at least I can walk. At least I can still see. At least hmm. like there's little things that you can always be grateful for. So I kind of just kept the grateful mindset during it. And it helped me through the hard awfulness of it. <laughs> Wow, for Gosh. sure. And then, yeah. So, Brianna, like, what are, what were you like thinking and doing at the time? Like, it must have been, it must have been kind of devastating seeing your sister like this. You know, like just down and out. Yeah, it was, it, it was tough. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was just that constantly, just trying to bring fun things around. Like her room, we painted it bright colors and got new sheets and bedding and got our keyboard in there and like my room we turned into the game room so there was like (laughs) foosball tables and tons of games and uh just things you can do with low energy um so just trying to keep keep lots of fun stuff around and joke through it laugh through it we made lots of lots of cancer jokes, which <laughs> are terrible at other people. <laughs> but but wow. like, I don't, it, it made her laugh. <laughs> so that yeah. was I guess I guess you sometimes a macabre sense of humor is just the right thing, I suppose, when you in those moments. And yeah. this is a, a tough question, but did you did you ever discuss like what happens if you don't make it? No, not really. <laughs> yeah. No. I never I never felt like I wasn't gonna make it. Mm-hmm. So I never brought up that conversation. Which is yeah. it's funny too, because I remember feeling mad that I knew I wasn't gonna pass because some of the moments were so bad. Cause I was like, Man, this would be so much easier, but like I'm glad not. But Yeah. Jeez. Um, and and sorry to like just talk about it a little bit, but I mean it's it's still quite interesting, at least um, you know, obviously for, for people that have never gone through this. But can you just explain a bit more like, you know, you, you have things like spinal taps and these sort of things. Are they like really painful and what are they exactly? So those are they put a needle in your spine and then they pull out some of your spinal fluid just to test that and then they shoot like certain kinds of chemo, usually methotrexate, they shoot that up your spine. And then, yeah, that was, that's the spinal tap, which actually I didn't think was that painful because it's kind of like an epidural if you hear people who have had that. Um, but yeah. It kind of, with all the stuff though, it's uh, all the treatments. They all kind of, people react different ways. Some people have, she has a super high pain tolerance. So a lot of that didn't, didn't bother her too much. It was more like the after effects of it with the nausea and everything. Yeah. But uh, yeah, some people it does affect way worse than it did with her mm-hmm. too. Yeah, like mm-hmm. it makes me sick afterwards. But the during part was like the easy part for me. Oh, man. You're so and strong, I must say, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, indeed. And I mean, talking about the people around you and the support structures, uh, I could we could imagine that the the hospital staff are uh, become very uh, sort of integral in your lives and intimate people in your lives and almost like family, I guess. And 
Uh, this, we've seen some amazing, you know, videos and stuff like that on Facebook. Tell us a little bit about um, the journey with the people around you, specifically at the hospital. So they totally become like your second family. They're, mm -hmm. The nurses have been, they were just so sweet and they would encourage me all along. And you can tell they really cared about your well-being and wanted to get you through it the best way. Mm -hmm. And then, like, even with us just doodling on t-shirts while we were in the hospital, they were so encouraging. <laughs> <laughs> we had those, like, simple little drawings, and all of our nurses raved about it. Like, we you had guys a should make this big. You'll be huge. We had a, like, yeah, we will be. We would bring in just a pile of white t-shirts and Sharpies and, like, some paints and just... She would sit there coloring while she was getting her chemo, just like the <laughs> stuff that made her, kept her positive. <laughs> she would just be so encouraging. And like, yeah, they, they really do become family. I love them. Yeah, at first we would just give them away to like our friends and uh, some of the kids at the hospital. Um, and our doctor, she was actually like, you need to like, you need to start selling these. <laughs> you're you're going to go broke, basically. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I kind of, all in the hospital, I did a lot of Google and I put up the website and uh, she said all the design of the t-shirts and everything. And, yeah, <laughs> I figured out how to get it all out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so. The, the cool thing about your story, which you're just touching on now, is that there's almost like two cherries on the top. You know, things obviously end up very well, but, you know, part of the journey is what you just started speaking about now is your charity kind of, uh, I don't know if it's a, if a char charity or a business or both uh, kind of like um, got created. And like you said, you were just doodling normally I guess on t-shirts and stuff like that and then you know catch some air just uh, started uh, you know as a as a business so you know what um what you know can you tell us more a bit about like the whole actual journey of it you know was there anything more to uh, just doodling on t-shirts and idea around that um, the first one, how it actually first started was just that, like Brianna wanted new workout shirts because she was getting really out of shape sitting on the bed. Yeah, we did a lot of laying down watching movies. <laughs> <laughs> I was doodling a llama one time and Brianna saw it and like, hey, I'd like that on a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll draw one for you. <laughs> <laughs> doodle the llama and put the little quote under it and that was our very first t-shirt and from that one like a lot of us <laughs> loved it so we, I made them more and then we started just doing different animals and our friends were requesting different animals and yeah that's how yeah. it was kind of yeah kind of cool because like you know when she's she can't really go out of the house much either during the intense part of treatment because you just gotta kind of stay in isolation more um, so really you're, you're, you're just so limited in what you can do. And like the t-shirt thing because you, you have to get dressed every day. So like, that's something every day you can put on and like, or what's your shirt you're wearing now? Stay happy. <laughs> like just a reminder, <laughs> a reminder every day of like, uh, what you, what you want out of life. And, um, yeah, just reminders of what's important or the llama one, just goofy, a goofy one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, and there's something interesting about a little llama, isn't there? It's kind of an awesome little goofy thing that makes you smile. <laughs> <laughs> and and who, who was your first t-shirt given to, did you say? Um, um, first one in the hospital, her name was Natalie. Natalie. Yeah. yeah, she was about sixteen. Uh -huh. um, going through treatment, and even like, yeah, that's another connection. Like her family, we were driving two and a half hours at the time down to the hospital where she was treated. Like, uh, yeah, once a week, sometimes a couple times a week, and so they would like, they uh, got us a place to stay. Their neighbor had a some open open house and so they yeah they kind of just totally took us in and like helped us while we were going through treatment too and uh they were always encouraging us and um connections like that 
are just uh, we would not have not have gone through this thing uh, if it weren't for all all that support. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And 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 the strapline for uh, your your business now it's it's helping kids feel happy when they feel what what is it exactly when they feel crappy. <laughs> Yep, helping kids with cancer stay happy when they feel crappy. Yeah, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> I love it. That's yeah, beautiful. Yeah, and what did you draw for her? To... Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, it was a giraffe. Um, oh, but yeah, the good thing with our our tagline, I guess, <laughs> for, uh, it was we we really our focus is more on happy and like bringing uh, bringing happiness into those moments that are really hard. But we wanted. We try to be really real too. Like it is a terrible thing to go through. Like so hard seeing her go through it, who's an adult. Um, and then there's all these little kids, like two, three, four years old, going through that same thing. Wow. Um, just kind of, kind of heartbreaking. And uh, a lot of people, you just don't know what it's like if you haven't gone through it. And so, you know, we don't want to brush over that, but. <laughs> you know no want people to know it's it's tough but you know we're trying to trying to make something good out of the situation to make it a little better <laughs> yeah there's there's nothing wrong with i suppose just trying to see some positive out of a or some light in a dark situation uh, and and you know and that's i mean how noble is that and you've been through it yourself so you know how important and powerful um that sort of mindset is you know even though like you say, it's a real thing and real serious, but, you know, ha have a little bit of fun too. That The, the way your mind is, the, the, the place that your mind is in uh, can obviously help just with healing and, you know, all of that too. So I, I think it's, it's really goes a lot deeper than just, um, you know, putting a smile on the face, you know. So um, you, you spoke about how cancer can, is serious and affects, you know, everyone and, and talking about the bigger family, um, your your grandpa used to say, um, "Catch some air." Or how, how did, where did that come from? And and sort of how did how did he f uh, feature in this? So that was just he used to say that to get rid of us, or just when <laughs> something annoying. was bugging him. <laughs> kind of like, get out of here! <laughs> go catch some air. Go, go away for a bit. And so we kind of used that with like the bad things or cancer, just to tell it to go away and catch some air. And yeah, that's where. Oh, awesome. That's cool. And does he is he still around, your grandpa? He's not. He passed away in I think two thousand or yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay, cool. And nice. and then just in terms of like the, the drawing and stuff, is is that's always been something that you've done? Like you do you like art or is it just more a doodle and <laughs> I when I was a kid I used to say I wanted to be an artist, but I didn't really draw much. And then I kind of haven't drawn at all since this, except for three years ago when I started drawing on t-shirts. <laughs> so something I've been discovering that I can do and like slowly getting better and discovering that I can kind of draw. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. And, you know, you're, you're really touching uh, so many people and, um, and so many lives and, you know, making people smile, as you said. Uh, can you just tell us a little bit more uh, about, uh, you know, cats and what, what you actually do with it and, and maybe some of the, um, yeah, the, the, the experience of going through this process that you're having? Yeah. Um, so some of the stuff, we really it's just whatever we can do to <laughs> keep them happy. Like the last, the last two days in a row, we just – showed up at hospital because one of the kids was in there with fevers and getting chemo and um we just show up bring little little rockets that we shoot with them or <laughs> uh games and just uh yeah just do, play legos whatever whatever we can do to distract from the other hard stuff that's going on um so that was the other day uh when they're doing a little better and outside of the hospital our favorite thing right now is taking them indoor skydiving. <laughs> <laughs> cool. That's been super cool. They love that. Um, done a couple hot air balloon rides with kids. We hope to do more of those um, as we grow and uh, 
Let's see. Oh, our next big thing is we're oh. planning a big trip to Disneyland with five or so of the families with kids yeah. that on cancer. Wow. So we're going to take a big group and go down in December. So we're excited about yeah. that. Oh, that's so cool. It's it's just amazing what you're doing, you know, like you, I, I almost feel like you sort of, you know, you're underplaying it because uh, I've been checking a lot of your stuff, you, you know, on social media and you really are like giving kids hope and it's so beautiful to see, you know, like you, you, you almost don't want them to kind of go through the hardships that you went through or you're just helping them through those hardships. Um, so it's just awesome. Yeah, you know, they're, uh, they're strong kids. Like when, when Christine was starting, they're the ones who they inspired her and gave her hope oh, yeah. to get through it because she saw these little three-year-olds going through the same thing and was like, okay, I think I, think I can do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's crazy too. They have, there's so much energy in them. Like during the chemo that they're getting, they're playing around in the playroom and like running around and like after treatment they have so much energy too that I was like wow mm-hmm. kids are amazing kids like I can do it and still like be me and yeah they're, do, they're really inspiring I, I know this is kind of a, a strange one to ask but do you think it's it's maybe easier as a kid to to have cancer than than it is for an adult like on a mental side of things i think mentally the kids have an advantage on us because they're just they're so good at just you know kind of being in their i don't know their mindset of i'm taken care of like i can play and yeah i don't know if adults we get more worried about things we like overthink mm. it gets all caught up in our brain and then we have a mind battle but i think that the kids they're just being a kid and like yeah it gets incredibly hard but their yeah. mindset is is really cool to see like that's mm-hmm. that's what made me want to have that mindset too like yeah i'm just gonna I'm just gonna do what the kids do <laughs> yeah 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 and, and and the treatment rates or the success rates in kids, if I'm not mistaken, is also um, quite a lot higher than with adults as well, you know, in terms of um, going to remission and, and actually clearing stuff out, which is, which is always um, good to know, you know. And, you know, just a moment ago, you were, you were saying the strength uh, of the kids, but what dawned on me, I was just, just hearing you speak, is just how much strength you guys have through such a horrible thing and it's just such a great story to to hear like you've had this real horrible thing that you could never imagine your life's taken a totally different turn and here you are like with so much strength for others and and you found this whole new life that's kind of come about because of something really negative and it's just one of those stories again where you're like you just never know what's around the corner yeah mm-hmm. that's cool. <laughs> yeah and, and and so so can you just talk like a little bit more about uh, catch some air like you know what what is your sort of mission what do you do uh, you know I know you kind of have three things that you really focus on um, but you know if you just want to tell us a bit more about that please um, yeah I like them uh, let's see we yeah we focus on a lot I'm just spending time with the kids because um, that that support from people who've gone through it too is like one of the, one of the things that has helped us the most, just having people there around you that love you, that understand. Um, So that's huge. And then the doing fun things, adventures, always, uh, always having something to look forward to because when you're going through it, a lot of the time, the next, the next thing you're thinking about is like treatment or, uh, not not wanting to go back to the hospital but if you can keep things that are positive too um that that helps a ton uh and then yeah the t-shirts obviously yeah. we uh, yeah. we keep our hospital stocked with them and then ship them out all over the country um and yeah we just they've they've helped helped us just stay, stay positive throughout the day and 
a lot of the kids they'll they'll wear them to their treatments and their parents will yeah. tell us like they we won't even let us wash it he just wants to wear it every day <laughs> oh, <cool. laughs> so, um, amazing stories too about adults who like they'll buy our oh, yeah. shirts and if they're going through treatment they'll wear them to their treatment and feel like a little bit better and a little bit stronger and yeah. That's just, it's kind of cool because that's what we wanted to happen. Like, we want it to be the type of brand where, like, somebody who's going through a tough time can buy one of our shirts and wear it and just feel, like, a little bit more positive or a little bit braver, mm-hmm. or just kind of uplifting yeah. going through hard times because everybody goes through hard times, even if it's not a cancer diagnosis. There's so mm-hmm. many other things. So we kind of yeah. want it just to everybody in that way that's cool you've really created like a movement haven't you you know it's i mean you you seem to be busy like all the time on either uh radio shows or at events and fairs and all these sort of things and it really seems to be taking a lot of traction yeah it's been uh really amazing to see because like we uh we don't know what we're doing half the time <laughs> we're, we're learning everything as we go <laughs> but like people will just hear our story and they'll invite our, invite us out to this event they're having to sell shirts or uh offer to we made this whole uh we we didn't call it bucket list because we couldn't really think about dying when she was trying to live this whole time through treatment so we called it a dream list and <laughs> just wrote out all these things we wanted to do part of that like keeping things in front of us to look forward to but people see that too and just reach out like hey i want to help you do this so people have sent us to uh like the largest hot air balloon festival in the world and Uh just bring other kids battling cancer up in hot air balloons there and uh gary was one of them He, he saw our story he came and put together this amazing video with him and and his friend Nils Wanberg um so yeah just helping us share about what we're doing and they made a couple of dreams come true as well and uh yeah just oh I can't even think of them all right now but so many um yeah. it's just been amazing to watch wow. that community come behind uh what we're doing and just want to help so yeah that's- it's true, it's really awesome. We'll, we'll, we'll get onto that dream list now in a second. Yeah. Um, but I think almost a, another dream, like, you know, came true. Like, I think you've now been cancer free for a year. Is that right, Christine? Like, well, I mean, <laughs> can you, can you just tell us a bit, like, what did, what did that feel like when you found out? It must have been quite unreal, I guess. Yeah, I I guess because I have checkups every month, so you find out every month that you're still clear. So every time it's like, woohoo, I'm healthy. (laughs) (laughs) It was like, yes, milestone. Um, Yeah, I can't quite explain it. It's just like this sense of feeling healthy and energetic and back to me. (laughs) I was just sick for so long that now that it's been done for a while oh. yeah wow. wow yeah and so so your energy levels are up you actually feel physically a lot better because you haven't had constant treatment and having to go into the hospital as much and stuff so do you just feel better as well like just all over yeah like wow. i noticed it the month after i finished treatment like my energy spiked right after that I was like, whoa, this is what it feels like to be normal. <laughs> <laughs> so I like, was able to run, play sports, be energetic again. And like, oh. yeah, it was my whole world opened up again. It was really cool. Yeah, they so, do. Uh, they keep a pretty close eye on her for about the first five years. They keep doing tests and everything. Because um, if it were to come back, it's most likely it would be in that time period. So a month is a, I mean, a year, year clear is definitely huge. But once yeah. we get to that five year mark, that'll be, that'll be even better. <laughs> wow. That's so cool. And, and does that, does five years like counts as like being in remission? How does that, that work? Um, I'm pretty sure now it still counts as being in remission, but once I hit the five year mark, it's just less likely to like reoccur again. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's just, yeah, you kind of Great. That's like the point we really want to get to. Yeah, yeah. 
And Brianna, I was just wondering, how, how do you feel like seeing your sister, um, you know, just have her sort of old self back and her energy levels back? And Yeah, it uh, definitely makes me happy. It was, it, was, uh, it was hard seeing her through a lot of, a lot of those times, like points where one point where her body completely shut down even she couldn't like her speech was slurred she couldn't walk couldn't barely raise her arm or anything um last a few days so there's stuff like that it's just so scary and crazy to see um so to see her now like doing good and through it and no not even really any like lasting side effects from it is just amazing i couldn't have asked for a better outcome <laughs> yeah that's 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 so nice and w- were you always close like as siblings was it always you two that were like you know cl- um, the close ones yeah we were pretty close but like yeah definitely during this we've become a lot closer like i moved we moved in we were both in separate places with friends um but then we ended up i moved in with her uh for yeah right when she was diagnosed and we've lived together ever since <laughs> yeah. and, and what you had to like you i guess you both had to put your lives on hold you know maybe studying or jobs that you had has that changed now like you want to go and do that again or has catch some air just sort of taken you on another path completely yeah pretty much took us on another another path completely um I, yeah, it's just kind of, kind of funny how life works out that way, like terrible situation, but now there's like nothing I would rather be doing than uh, what we're doing right now and being able to hang out with these kids and, and uh, make, make what they're going through a little bit better. Like that makes us happy. (laughs) People say all the time, like, oh, you guys are so amazing, but like, I I don't know. We feel like the lucky ones to be able to, to do what we're doing. Wow. I think that's the, I mean, by your, your sort of passion for what you're doing and the love for what you're doing is totally infectious. And I guess that's why people gravitate towards you guys uh, as individuals, but as a movement as well. And, and that's where our man Gary comes into the picture. And so, so you mentioned him earlier, you said that he had made a video for you guys and you actually met him, uh, and stuff like that. So tell us uh, like <laughs> how that meeting went down. So, he, had, he originally found us from Instagram. So he <laughs> yeah. saw our company and what we were doing and loved it. So he bought a t-shirt and then we would start seeing him post these videos. He would just, just like, tag us on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> he would just be wearing our shirt and talking good things about us and what we do. And we're like, who is this guy? He looks awesome. <laughs> <laughs> We were we were on a road trip one time, and he lives in Southern California, and we were going through there. So we were like, "Hey, we should meet Gary." Wow. <laughs> so we picked a public place just in case. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even tell anyone because we were we knew people would freak out if we were going to meet some middle aged guy who we met <laughs> offline. <laughs> that's, a, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> turned out to be great and like he's basically one of our adopted uncles now he's he's like family uh-huh. yeah. oh awesome that's so cool <laughs> yeah that's, so, so what was the what was like the meeting like when you caught up with him was it was it like straight off the bat like good or was it a little bit awkward at first how did it go yeah. down no it was like we kind of just hit it off right away <laughs> like it was <laughs> oh he was we picked a place that was like a healthy fruit bar and we found out he was allergic to all things fruit. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> like, well, we picked the place. He got, he got like the one place. Or something. <laughs> 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 but, oh. um, about that. Yeah, totally just natural connection though, which is how a lot of things have been happening through this. And, uh, uh. But yeah, a little bit later, him and uh, his friend who does uh, video editing and everything, Nils Wanberg, they both came up together and um, just shot this incredible, uh, basically mini documentary mm-hmm. short film mm-hmm. on our story and uh, 
kind of since then it's really really taken off because there's you know you can write what you do and we post pictures a lot on instagram to kind of show it that way but they really like captured the whole thing through video and um them just following us around for a couple of days and showing what we do so wow. yeah I watched that video and I was totally yeah. blown away by it. So I was like, wow. And and you could just sense that like, I don't know, Gary is just such a good guy. You know what I mean? He just wants, he wants the best in, in everything. And like, he loves positivity and people that are giving back and doing things. And it's like, he's an impossible guy not to like, you just look at him and he has this smile, like yeah. and, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> Uh -huh. We're we giving him a massive Gary. shout out right now, all of us, so when he's oh, listening yeah. to this. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We've actually invited Gary on the, on the podcast, but we're still waiting to hear back from him. So uh -huh. we can, yeah. get him on. <laughs> now that we've got you, hopefully it'll force him to come on as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. That would be great. Yeah. He yeah, has so many stories too. <laughs> I can imagine. Awesome. Yeah, I definitely. We love that. <laughs> yeah. so, so one of the things that you always do is you have a like a cardboard cutout of uh, Ellen DeGeneres. And obviously, I guess that's the number, I think one on your dream list is to get on the show. And you do this every yeah. single time so that hopefully at some point she probably notices and, you know, yeah. invites you on. How's, no. that, how's that all going along? <laughs> We just keep tagging her. <laughs> yeah, waiting for her to see eventually. I know. It's, uh, it's fun anyway because you know, everyone loves Ellen. So we bring her around, <laughs> set her up at our booth. And, uh, <laughs> yes. just, it makes people laugh. And that's, that's the whole point behind everything we do anyway. So <laughs> it's fun. And, <laughs> and if we end up on her show one day, that would be awesome. <laughs> Of course. Have you, have you, has she replied to anything, to anything yet or her team? Not quite yet. <laughs> yeah. I keep tagging her. I know. I don't know. We need to go viral. A lot of people need to go, go viral on there. <laughs> yeah, for it's, sure. It's, it's a, like you said, it's an awesome little talking point though anyway, isn't it? Like yeah. people are like, hey, what's this all about? And you're like... What do you mean? It's just Ellen. She's hanging out with us here. So <laughs> you don't bring a cardboard cut out of Ellen. Yeah, there? yeah. Come on. She couldn't make it today, so we had to bring this. <laughs> yeah. and it was just fun. A lot of times during treatment, we would just watch her show, and it was like the favorite favorite show of the day. You just laugh, and uh, yeah, it, it, we we brought cardboard cut out. Ellen to some of her spinal taps, her chemo appointments. <laughs> she was in the, funny look in, the, the in the back there for support. Oh, <laughs> uh, um, that's freaking. She went that's, skydiving, that's what... skydiving oh, yeah. together. That was cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to sound so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> so, so you, you know, talking about skydiving, you've, you've obviously used and mentioned it a little bit earlier about your your dream list and um, it, it's quite extensive. It's an awesome, really awesome list and skydiving is on there. Um, what are some of your, your, your favorites and what's sort of next on your, on your list that you've got planned? Ooh, favorite one was skydiving was up there. Yeah. Now it's just kind of snowballed into going a lot and we're getting our license. Well, she already got hers. I'm on my way to mine. Yeah. <laughs> But <laughs> I mean, there it's uh, I can't really pick a favorite because they're all all is so like unique and uh, different people involved. Like that's part of our, our favorite things about it, too, is the people we get to meet and do these things with. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. They're all, all just great. Scott having a super fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so it's, it's like a list of a hundred things and these are things that you, you obviously just want to do. And, and how, how is it working? People are going, cool, I'll, I'll sponsor you and do this. Or do you, how do you actually sort of get them ticked off? For some, I mean, it's that. Like occasionally that happens, but. A lot others, of them have been that. Yeah, a lot is that. And yeah. then others were just like, hey, let's do this and try to sure. check this off this year. And yeah. Yeah. so it's kind of just random. We don't really plan it. Then people mm -hmm. step in and like want to help us with it. Yeah. yeah next, just, next one on the list is the Disneyland trip to take all the kids, uh, a lot of the kids from the hospital down there. So we're doing that just in a couple months. 
Um, and you're like, this is this is for the kids, but it's also for us. <laughs> yeah. We also get to join in on that. <laughs> uh, um, cool. What else? Oh, eventually we want to have like just a big, a big house or a, yeah, like center by an ocean by the beach that we can just have like opened up to families battling cancers where you know whenever they can whenever they want they can just come down relax um take a break Get down away. there yeah. yeah so that's a big big goal yeah. <laughs> oh, you know it's so amazing about it's like your list but it's actually a, about others most of it like how amazing is that i, I really like that yeah we got a lot of, a lot of both on there that's yeah. it's, it's awesome it's, mm-hmm yeah that's really cool i mean i almost feel like we haven't like really got into the amazing work that you're doing you kind of i don't know i feel like you know i watching the videos and seeing your posts and stuff and and just the real difference that you're making to you know these kids lives and 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 bringing so much like happiness and that to them you know i you know i guess there's there's probably lots of stories that you have um maybe you can share one or two with us um that are that are you know worth sharing but like i i i read that you actually um go and spend like the nights at kids houses and you have something like you know 80 houses you could just spend the night at if you wanted to because you know this is what you do you go and you spend the night with them and play games and stuff what are some of the other great stories and things that you that you've done ah oh, man um let's see like the cooler moments were well, while I was going through treatment too since since I was going through the same thing they were there were kids who would be like newly diagnosed and about to get their port access which is where they like it's a thing they implant in your chest and that's where the nurses like poke you to get the fluids into you so like with a lot of the kids that would be really scary and especially in the beginning when it's all new and there's like a needle coming at you so it would be kind of cool because I could go up to them and like, show them my port and where I get access and like the nurses could watch, they could watch me get it done and then it would be less scary for them to do afterwards. So there were like moments like that where I was like, wow, this, this is really cool. I can actually help sort of. Mm-hmm. And then there was just other things where somebody, one of the kids would be having a really tough time and feeling really gross in treatment and nauseous, but then we would come and we would shoot rockets and we would play and just kind of distract the kids from how they were feeling and just be able to bring play and happiness into that. And it's been cool because we'll hear stories from the parents saying like that it really helped and their kid mm-hmm. was a lot less scared when they got back home and the little things like that. And then, yeah, we do love sleepovers. <laughs> We've got one coming up uh, tomorrow, tomorrow night. Yeah. <laughs> Seeing it Austin's house tomorrow. We're gonna to play with him. Yeah. <laughs> so, so how how do you how do you like how do you end up at that place where you're like, okay, cool, we're gonna to go to Austin's house tomorrow? Like do you meet them at the hospital and you just get on or how does it end up at that place? So a lot of the ones we're that close with are all like the kids that I went through treatment with. There's there's a good amount who like we all got diagnosed at kind of the same time. Mm -hmm. So there's a few families that are pretty tight knit and we all know each other really well. And like the Mm -hmm. kids, they're basically like our family now. Mm -hmm. So that's how we're able to do so much with them because they're, they really are like our family. So we all went through those intense times together and now it's going through other times. Mm -hmm. So yeah, what else? (laughs) And so like, um so this particular uh, is it austin did you say his name was mm-hmm. yeah is he, is he so he's still under care he's still getting treat he's still getting treated he is. wow yep. so it's actually and, for the boys they get an extra year of treatment so for me it was two and a half uh, years but if i was a boy then it would be three and a half oh so, wow yeah. it, is there a reason for wow. that obviously i i think it's just how like the chromosomes are just the different things react i think it's just to make sure it's more likely to come back if it's a shorter treatment for boys so they keep it going longer yeah i mean wow. for that particular diagnosis yeah oh that, that was great so, yeah there's yeah. a lot of a lot of different kinds too but. okay yeah. cool 
So, I mean, yeah, I, there, there's just a couple more things, I guess. So like in, in terms of uh, catch some air, like I guess you're learning the ropes as as you go along, and uh, there was a there was a post about how you actually learned how to make a a t-shirt business, um, or for a particular there was a couple of people that helped you with that. But where yeah. you know uh, where are you going to go with this company, and like you know are you how how can people help you? Are you raising money? Um, you know how how are things working going for you going forward? Um. Did you want me to hit on the, how we learned it all and everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of it? Okay. Uh, so yeah, while I was kind of in the hospital, like Googling everything and how we were going to start all this up. Um, uh, let's see. I got into some other online course that was like not even really relevant to what we were doing, I, but I just, I knew nothing. So it was kind of like how to sell courses online, but I was like, well, I don't know how to sell anything, so it'll probably help some out. I, it was weird, but I was I was in that, and because uh, yeah, we were we were just doing by hand t shirts, and it um, it got to where uh, we had we put those out for sale, and like fifty people bought a shirt, and then it was when like she was feeling super sick and couldn't even like be out to draw them and put them all together. So it was like me trying to do all these shirts for people and they're like okay this isn't gonna work we gotta gotta <laughs> figure out the next thing how to print and um, so yeah I started uh started getting online to figure it out and in this other random course I was in uh Andrea Lake she was in the course too because she was launching this uh her company teacher that was t-e-e-a-c-h-e-r and it was basically how to start a t-shirt company. <laughs> so I, uh, right away, I was like, well, that's the course I need. <laughs> so I, I dropped out of this other one <laughs> but for hers. And uh, yeah, her, Andrea Lake, Dan Caldwell, and Daniel DeMassa. Dan Caldwell was the founder of Tap Out, that MMA clothing brand. Uh, yeah. um, Andrea was like sold millions of shirts to all kinds of stores and so it was them too like teaching this and we were kind of on the ground level so we would always be asking questions and through live calls and uh they would just help us with everything from like where to get the blank shirts from to uh what kind of screen printing prices you should be getting to like helping with design on the website and pretty much step by step whatever questions we had they would answer and um and yeah through that process too like andrea is pretty much like another sister now <laughs> she uh she loved what we're doing too and was always always helping us and we've uh yeah we hang out a lot too now and uh that's that's again kind of our favorite part of <laughs> how all this works is the connections we make um but yeah she kind of helped us set everything up um and get it to where it is now yeah and, and like, wow. <laughs> very crazy yeah and and sort of you know are you are you selling a lot do you sell a lot of shirts or do you give them away how, how does how does that sort of process work so it, yeah we do we do both like to the kids we give them away um and then we sell them online we're in the gift shop at the hospital a few other stores some skydive shops uh, <laughs> <laughs> i've heard about oh, us yeah. and they carry us to now so we're still at like um, I don't know, kind of now we're at the point of like growing more and we'll start reaching out to other stores and getting in places soon, but kind of like, we've kind of just been growing it at our own pace because a lot of this was like during the hardest parts of our treatment and like that was the main focus, but we were just kind of doing yeah. this on the side. So like now that she's back to a hundred percent and, uh, we're kind of we'll start hitting that side of it more and figuring out how to how to really get it out there more but there's been some awesome stuff too like walmart they saw our story and a bunch of the local uh branches around here they carried it as kind of a we partnered up with them and children's miracle network and she did the design and wow sold all these shirts to sell as a fundraiser for 
uh, local Children's Miracle Network. So super cool stuff like that. <laughs> That's really cool. And so, so is it all like US based at the moment? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we do, we do ship all over, but um, yeah, it's mainly still mainly in the US. Mm -hmm. And you, for the time being, now, now that you're well again, you're like drawing llamas like crazy. At, uh, oh, yeah. New <laughs> Cutting <laughs> out the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I, I suppose like having that coaching with that program must have been, it just illustrates how, how good and important it is to have a coach uh, and a guide uh, with that kind of thing. I suppose it's been pretty big for you guys having that, that guidance. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we wouldn't be where we are without that and all the encouragement and uh, help and input and everything. Um, so, yeah, that kind of stuff, it's really just amazing. The whole, through this whole process, it's kind of been like, everything we've needed it just kind of shows up like right at the right time <laughs> and uh yeah it just kind of it makes you see like i don't know when you're doing when you're doing what you're what you're supposed to be doing or what feels right and doing good things like kind of the world and god or whatever you want to call it just like shows up and and helps you it's open for you yeah and yeah, when you're on the right path, like it happens. Yeah. Yeah, totally. We're like big believers in, you know, karma and like you said, putting out good stuff and the world and universe somehow repays you. And, you know, that's, uh, you guys are just doing such amazing stuff that I'm sure you'll always get repaid. So that's good. And people will show up and help you. That's for sure. And um, you've also got an exciting trip coming up, aren't you? You're going to Italy next week. Is that right? Yeah, oh, it'll be cool. my first time overseas. <laughs> <laughs> cool. What, what, is that a holiday or is that um, something else? Yeah, just kind of a random just, trip that yeah just happened fun. just earlier this month. <laughs> we decided we were going to go on it because our friend and boyfriend yeah. were going to go, and so just decided to jump on that trip and <laughs> join him in yep. Italy. It's one of the things on the list too, so we're going to cross that one off. <laughs> cool. Cool. Eat some Italian ice cream and some pizza and pasta there. Should be good, eh? Yeah. <laughs> All my favorite things. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> do, do you, will, you, will you be like making a turn in anywhere, like a, you know, a hospital or anything like that? Have you got plans for any of that while you're away? Maybe. We're going to, um, oh, a few months back we met this, she's like an Italian dancer um, the group is called Blindly Dancing because she actually had uh, cancer and went pretty. Uh, one eye is fully blind, right? And the other she can. The see other 20%. she can see a little bit, but she started this organization and teaches people to dance with blindfolds. And mm. uh, yeah, super cool group. So we're gonna try to connect with them over there too, and maybe cool. hopefully get over to some hospitals. Yeah yeah oh, beautiful. great work great work well done it's really yeah. inspiring and um where to from here for you do you have any plans like where you're taking the business is there anything exciting coming up oh. <laughs> business wise we need to start actually trying to get into more stores that's that's our goal yeah. for this next year <laughs> but yeah most exciting know, we... thing business wise i don't know if disneyland counts but that's been the thing we've been most excited for <laughs> 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 we've been trying to sell a lot of t-shirts so we can do that with all the kids yeah. Yeah. yeah a lot of it though is just like i don't know just constantly moving doing a little bit each day um to move forward and kind of see where it goes shift if we need to and um yeah just kind of go where where doors open and i don't know i guess the sky's the that. limit <laughs> no. yeah i love that yeah think big and and just keep your just keep your positivity and your, you know, like just that, you know, it's just such a good, you've got coming from such a good place, you know, and you're living in the moment and you're going with the flow. It's, it's really beautiful and, you know, helping so many people on the way. So how can people get in contact with you and maybe make a donation or get hold of your t-shirts? Yeah. yeah, that would be it catchsomeair.com so we have a section that you can donate or we have email on there so you can email buy us t-shirts of course okay. that, uh, that that always helps, helps. <laughs> um, all of our social media goes directly to us because we're running everything so yeah they so. message us on instagram or facebook or 
Twitter. Where it's get all, all of it. it's all just at catch some air. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Beautiful. Cool. Very, very, very inspirational and uh, heartwarming speaking to you girls. I just wanted to say like, you know, from my side, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Uh, thank you for sharing your story. I know that a lot of it is probably hard to speak about, um, but I'm so glad that there is such a happy ending to all of this. And what you are doing is truly sensational and the world really needs like more people like you, more people with the right mindset and more people that are just willing to go out there and help other people. Because if, if the, if they, if each person in the world did what you were doing and just helped one person, it would just be amazing, you know? So yeah, you, you just, you just really, really, really are inspirational girls. You do everything with a big smile on your face and, you know, we're just really, really excited to see where this goes for you and we will make sure we can support it as much as we can. And hopefully we can also get a catch some air t-shirt. We'll, we'll buy some cat some air t-shirts. Yeah, we'll, we'll and, send and one over. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. And hopefully we can, we can have a, like a, not a fruit juice, but maybe a coffee with you, Gary. And uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. sometime in California, which will be amazing. But, uh, but would be keep, awesome. keep up the amazing work. Keep smiling. Keep helping people. You guys are really, really incredible. Aww, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for having us on too. This I know. So this, fun. Was, this was okay. fun. Yeah. First, cool. first podcast. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and just briefly from my side, guys, I just look, I mean, it, it just got such a big smile on my face hearing your story. It's really, really inspiring. And at the same time, what I really took from it is that the human aspect of what you're doing is so beautiful because you You've, every step of the way, you're thinking about someone else and how can you contribute to, some, to the greater good. And at the same time, you're getting fulfilled through that. And it's such a good lesson and such a good way about going through life is like always think about someone else first and then yourself. And by doing that, you just, like you say, doors open, things happen. And I think that's a really cool thing that I'm going to just really focus on going forward and um, and totally just, yeah, like Eric said, we just can't wait to see where you guys go with us. And we're just really supporting and rooting for you guys. And, uh, and thank you for doing that. I think there's so many stories that, that are not heard or seen. And, and these kind of things are, are, this is what it's all about. You know, it's just someone might just hear your story and someone you've touched some child's life that we'll never know. And you might not even know in the future but it made a massive difference. And and I just think that's where it's at. And so thank you for that inspiration and reminder. (laughs) (laughs) Cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, so that's, that's awesome. I mean, that's, uh, yeah. I mean, such a great podcast. You girls are really, really great. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for all you guys too too yeah. to tell all these amazing stories we've listened to your other other podcasts too and cool, this is man. <laughs> no, that's cool. thanks yeah. man. that's kind of you guys it's very kind yeah, yeah, yeah thank you yeah yeah <laughs> our, fa- our favorite thing is to catch up with our with our guests that's for sure it's always like you know because yeah. it's cool it's amazing speaking over the phone and zoom and stuff and you learn so much from from every single guest but like yeah. when you meet them in person, it's really like, okay, cool. It's like, you know, it solidifies the bond, you know, connection. Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I guess it's almost impossible to explain, isn't it? It's like, you know, yeah, what it feels yeah. like now compared to then. Pretty diff- yeah. I, I don't really know how to put it in a way. It's just, yeah, I don't know. The best way I can say it is I feel like, like me again, because for so yeah. long it was just, like you don't feel like you because you're not able to do much and you're just always feeling nauseous and always feeling weak. Mm-hmm. So now that like I'm strong yeah. again, I have energy. It's just, ha, I feel yeah. like yeah. flowing through me. <laughs> do you, yeah. do you feel cool. like you feel like just so much more grateful for everything in life? Like I can imagine you must do yeah, you just, you, you literally appreciate everything now. Yeah, you really do. Like, oh yeah. Every day I wake up and I'm like able to get out of bed and walk and 
yeah just do life yeah eat food because for a while that was hard and yeah wow yeah, just really like the bad things that used to bug me before like, yeah me at all. Like, of course uh, yeah, yeah, significant yeah. Yeah. You, you really you really <laughs> find out what's important in life don't you when things like that happen you're like people worry about so much mm. stupid stuff yeah so much stupid That's stuff thing we, we noticed a lot even recently like other yeah. people ask like, yeah oh, how's your day going and so he'll just start off like oh, oh terrible like this, and this oh and my this. gosh like, i throw my nail and my nail polish at the end of it we're looking at each other <laughs> yeah you're like seriously what was the problem totally yeah it's just like hang on so let's just discuss what just happened here yeah <laughs> really. we look know, we, you know, you know and and and, and yeah. also we you know like maybe a, a year down the line or something like that so uh, you know we we have a round two and we can talk about things if you know things are That's growing right. and whatnot then yeah yeah, yeah we could tell yeah. how you guys are going yeah, yeah. Cool. sounds good cool. cool. right, yeah. guys. <laughs> maybe cool. we'll have more, uh, more practice by then yeah. too <laughs> <laughs> no, you're great you're great so well you guys done. were great thanks <laughs> again guys it was really cool. amazing chatting to you hey thank you, you. Okay, cool. Awesome. Okay. cool yeah See you later. And good afternoon. <laughs> Thanks Thank a lot. You. See you. you guys Cheers. too. See bye. You. bye bye bye. Cheers. Bye bye. bye. <laughs> Waking at dawn, packing the gear, September tour, and up in the air. Stop at the toll, digging for change.